What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney with an Actual Lawyer. I'm your host, Zach, joined by our voice actor, Wes. Hello! And our actual lawyer, Bridge. Today is Toe Horizon Forbidden West, baby. Yep, and then we're going to stop doing this game. We're just going to be an all yeah, Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West with an actual lawyer, folks. Uh, if you like this show, you can catch it live on twitch.tv slash Saved in a Team every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so, hey, go follow us there. We do uh, several streams throughout the week, including next Saturday, the 26th, in which case we're going to be streaming for about 10 hours uh, with a whole bunch of fun stuff. So tune in for that. And uh, if you want to support us in other ways, head over to patreon.com slash save data team, throw us a couple bucks. We'd really appreciate it. And maybe head over to etsy.com slash shop slash save data team. We have some merch, including brand new merch. Just what? got put in the store a couple days ago. Tell me about it, Zach. Uh, well, it's, it's save data team themed. Only one of them has our actual logo, but the other ones say our name in a different font. One's actually legally not the Sega font. It's pretty cool. I recommend checking it out. And not to mention the Anytown Ohio branded shirts, which Bridge, where on the street is you have a new bar exam question for us. Take us home, Bridge. Tony raises alligators on his farm in Anytown, Ohio. God damn it, Tony. <laughs> Already after a great start. He keeps the animals penned inside a wire fence enclosure. On the enclosure's gate is a large sign reading, Danger, Keep Out. That's good. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yep. Barry lives next door to Tony. One night, he sneaks onto Tony's property and opens the gate to the alligator enclosure. Barry, what the fuck? Why would you do that, Barry? Why you gotta do that, Barry? Purposely allowing the animals to escape. Barry, Barry, has, Barry has long resented Tony's popularity in the neighborhood <laughs> and hopes that Tony will be blamed for the escaped alligators. Tony's just like, just, just fucking the coolest guy around, has sex with a different partner every night, walks into the bar, everybody's like, Tony! And he's got like, All those alligators, Tony! Alligator Tony! <laughs> <laughs> fucking alligator Tony, what a great name. Oh my God. This vendetta. This is the true rivalry. Vera lives in a nearby town. On the night in question, she is driving past Tony's property when she accidentally veers into a ditch, flattening her tire. Okay. Oh, no. oh, Angry no, at herself and too impatient to wait for a tow truck, Vera begins Vera. walking in the dark towards town to obtain assistance. Vera. Oh, That's God. a bad idea. This is a horror movie now. Just a few steps into her journey, however, Vera trips over one of Tony's alligators. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which oh, by no. then I'm had so crawled nervous. onto the roadway. Oh, no. Vera, Vera falls to the ground, breaking her right leg. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> the fuck did she fall on? The fucking... <laughs> She fell on the alligator's mouth. I mean, to be fair, I really, I honestly don't know why I didn't just change this back to the question to the alligator bit her leg. Yeah, I was just saying, like, to be fair, <laughs> breaking her leg is maybe the least of her fears at this moment. But sure. <laughs> uh, Tony hears Vera screams from inside his house and rushes to the roadway to find Vera in agony on the ground. Uh huh. The alligator. No instance of what you? happened to the alligator she tripped over. Okay. Uh, okay. Unsure of what to do, Tony calls his best friend Mike, who is in his final year of medical school. Hell yeah, get okay. Mike. Okay. Tony does his best to follow Mike's instructions over, on giving first aid over the phone, but, okay. but poor cell phone service in the area makes Mike's instructions difficult to hear. Oh no! Oh, man, <laughs> those Anytown Towers are not super he's great. Like, he's like, he's like, Mike's like, okay, Tony, wh whatever you do, don't. <laughs> What? Don't do what? <laughs> He's like, Tony, don't cut the wire. Don't cut the, the red wire. <laughs> and then Vera just explodes. <laughs> Vera That's is a bomb. Was Vera was a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> An ambulance eventually arrives and takes Vera to a nearby hospital, where she undergoes okay. emergency surgery. As a result of complications related to Terry's emergency treatment, 
Vera suffers permanent leg damage. Jesus. Oh, so Terry... <laughs> Tony, how did you do such a bad Tony job? Tony fucked it up. <laughs> he just was like, wait, so your leg hurts? I know how to fix that. Cut <laughs> your leg off. <laughs> Hey, oh. your leg doesn't hurt anymore, does it? Oh my god. Uh, Pete is a columnist for the local newspaper. Got another new character? In writing about the incident, Pete states that Vera is known in the community for filing frivolous lawsuits. Wonder if she'll take that path again. Guess we'll all find out soon enough. Jesus! Oh no! Pete's this just fucking slandering Vera's good name. It's because that Tony's so cool. Everybody uh, actually, loves Zach, Tony. It's, He's not. It's, it's libeling libel. her good You're name because right. it's in writing. You're very right. Uh, You're very right. Very <laughs> Six months later, Vera contacts a prominent attorney to discuss potential claims against Tony, Barry, Mike, and Pete. Um. Oh, <laughs> and you are asked to determine what possible claims uh, what possible claims could exist among the parties. Vera literally came to the wrong neighborhood. Yeah. This, and yeah. I think it's like, this, this is why, like, Ohio really had some great questions. Because these ones are, like, clearly not as good. Like, this is pretty I needed, wild, I needed, Bridge. I needed more substance with the alligators, though. The alligators were not nearly yeah, a big yeah. enough part of the story. Could yeah, have the alligators definitely anything. fucked off after... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the alligators—they were—they were, they yeah, were the, on screen I, for like five seconds, and yeah, from a writing was... perspective, the alligators not not nearly utilized enough. Mm. New Jersey lawyers. If you're gonna introduce alligators to your, if you're gonna introduce alligators to your story, I want substantial interaction with alligators. You better use the alligators. Yeah, yeah, yeah use yeah. the alligators. Tap in the want, potential. I wanna... Of those alligators. I want a Chekhov's gator. <laughs> Fuck, literally, right as you said that, fucking paperweight jellyfish says Chekhov's oh, alligator. Shit. <laughs> Holy shit. I want I want oh, Pete yeah. to be you writing it, that column and then an alligator to attack him. Wow. That's, that's a twist. Chekhov's gator is such a funny, like, this is a really good joke, y'all. <laughs> Chekhov's gator. Chekhov's gator. When you introduce an alligator, you have to use it. has to bite alligator. somebody's leg at some point. <laughs> it has to bite so not just get tripped over. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously fuck Barry, because Barry released alligators yeah. onto the public. Yeah, not okay. Um, uh, Tony didn't do anything, I don't think, because he clearly put up signage that said well wait i mean i guess you could say he did he didn't do enough to protect i remember from the, the kobe the cobra question if you have an exotic animal such as an alligator if it gets out you are fucked basically it doesn't matter right. although i don't know in the case of does somebody else fucking let them out or is, is it well still but with fault? kobe he didn't he didn't advertise that he had the snakes they were just in his garage and well, this one he did had tony like, ever, he's like check out my cool alligator he, he had I'm alligator signage. tony <laughs> it's signage, signage that's always true. said danger keep out that's it true. didn't imply what was inside that's true, that's true. oh that's true. damn again uh, 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 also this 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 question also led me to look up where alligators live in the u.s yeah what like just, the climate just they're so definitely be like, not why is in someone in jersey, new jersey I mean, raising alligators this has to be a florida thing right <laughs> go to go to the man. fucking bayou dude yeah why are you doing this in <laughs> jersey yeah uh bridge what who, who's liable for what what's happening all right yeah. so uh, as Zach correctly pointed out, uh, the first thing you want to point out is Tony does have a strict liability, uh, strict liability strict claim. Strict liability, that's what it is. Yeah, and yeah, and to reiterate what that is, strict liability basically means you don't have to be at... F if, if harm occurs, it doesn't matter what precautions you took place to prevent it. You're just in trouble for it. Even if your right. shitty neighbor does it for you. Uh, again, it, in states... In states with comparative and contributory negligence, uh, his responsibility of the damages can be limited. Okay. Uh, based on, in this case, Barry's negligence. <laughs> it's funny to call it negligence yeah, because... Say, negligence. It was purposeful. More, more like being it, an outright it, it's, bastard. It's, it's, right, it's, it's, funny to call, it's funny to call it a negligence claim because he straight up just opened a gate with the purpose of letting him out, but like, 
that's technically what it's called. You were negligent in opening a gate that led to alligators escaping. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, so there's a strict liability claim against Tony that could be reduced by whatever share of the fault Barry would have. Okay. Once again, doesn't matter if they're fenced in, doesn't matter if you sign in. If you're keeping Damn. dangerous animals, things like poisonous snakes or alligators or lions or tigers and shit like that. You better make yeah. sure they don't get out. So does, uh, does yeah, Barry if you, if, yeah, if you have wild that. animals and they get out and hurt someone, you're pretty much in trouble no matter what. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that one obviously exists. Um, and again, and also, to- and Tony can also obviously sue Barry for trespass oh, okay. and, you know, opening his gate. Yeah, yeah. Right. Living and potentially any alligators that he can't recapture or get hurt or anything. I mean, that's again, that's Barry's all liable to get for Tony for that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now, the other uh, the other important thing, I actually don't know if I've talked about this one in the bar exam question is. um Ooh. Uh, Vera's claim against Tony for the medical care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And he's so, like attempting to help, but make Yeah, it so as I've mentioned before, I think I've mentioned this before. In the US, strangers do not have any duty to come to the aid of another person, of another injured stranger. Right. Um, it's not okay. morally right, but you don't have any obligation to help other people unless a special relationship exists, parent child, oh, teacher. Oh, yeah. The- the, the, teacher student you're in charge of there's not yada, like yada, a yada. don't be a dick clause there's there's no. there's the well-known not a good samaritan clause yeah um. you don't yeah, you don't have to help anyone don't be um, a hero clause yeah. again some states have tried changing this um to things where it's like if you can help someone without any danger to yourself you can be but this is an incredible that's still an incredibly limited and minority yeah. uh rule for the most part, there's no duty to aid in America. Yeah. Huh. However, once you choose to aid someone, oh no, you are responsible to not leave that person in a worse condition than when you found them. Okay. No. So if you try and help someone punish. and you suck terribly at it, then you can get in trouble. Uh huh. Yeah. Q Q wicked. Um. <laughs> Now that, but that, but that can be offset by states that have a good Samaritan statute, which can limit liability for people trying to help. Okay. Again, it, it lot, a, a lot of it comes down to like you know, a was your motive to help, and b like, were you just bad at helping, or just like ridiculously <laughs> reckless in trying to help someone? How did you mess this up so bad? <laughs> right, like, like again, if he went and took a hammer and said, "I know, if I break the leg more, we can reset it better," like. <laughs> That's probably gonna get in trouble. That's probably not covered by a good Samaritan statute. Oh my god! <laughs> Tony's like, just on the phone with his doctor friend. He's like, "Really? I should grab a ball peen hammer? Are you sure?" <laughs> I should break the other leg to even it out. <laughs> and he's like, sense. "He's like, yeah, no, that's that not what I said at all." He's like, "That's what you said, okay?" That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, good Samaritan statutes are more like in the classic example is you break someone's rib, giving them the Heimlich. Uh-huh. That's sort of yeah, that that's sort of the classic example of Good Samaritan statute. Oh, okay, like okay, okay. It, it's well, it's an unfortunate, I... painful thing that can happen, but it wasn't the course of helping someone. Or right. if you try and like save someone who's drowning and you hurt them while pulling them out of the ocean. That's more <laughs> of what the Good Samaritan statute protects, not just okay. recklessly bad aid. So it, it's <laughs> well, it's tough like... to tell in this situation what's gonna happen because we don't know exactly what Tony did. So there's a chance for negligence here based on the existence of a good Samaritan statute and the, you know, whether his attempt to help was just completely reckless or had some value. Uh huh. Um, I don't have a first aid kit, but I do have a belt sander. So uh, (laughs) let's see how that works. Oh, no. Um, Similarly, again, Vera could technically bring a similar claim against Mike, especially since he's only a med a med school student and not actually a doctor yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but once again, that very wildly depends on. Again, the, it was the cell phone coverage that damaged his ability to give proper aid. Assuming he, assuming even though you're still in medical mm-hmm. school, he had enough he had an ability to describe proper aid he probably can't get in trouble because it was the poor cell phone service, not his bad instructions that caused damage. Okay. Yeah, um, so Mike's probably fine. Um, as we mentioned, Barry's pretty obviously going to get negligence for opening a 
thing of opening an alligator, opening the gate to an, to an alligator attack. Yeah, come on, Barry. Just because you're not as cool as Tony doesn't mean you do this. Yeah, I think the judge rules in favor of Tony because he's like, we all fucking like Tony. Fuck Tony's you, Barry. cool. Barry, you suck. <laughs> Barry, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, finally, there's the defamation in the form of libel against Pete. Um, again, oh, slander is spoken, oh, yeah. def- defamation, libel is written, defamation. I can't yeah, believe that. People charge about it. That's such a hilarious, like, final anecdote is, like, some reporter tried to s- fucking talk shit. He just tried to be a dick about it. Tried to talk like, shit on wow. Vera. <laughs> we spread lies about Tripped Vera. over another alligator, huh? <laughs> it's not the first time she's done this. <laughs> so... <laughs> Libel and slander are actually very confusing Mm. because the burden of proof that the plaintiff has to prove to be successful depends on, A, how important the person is, and B, what's being lied about. Okay. Okay. So Vera's to like not, Vera a, not a high just... profile politician. She's somebody right. who doesn't yeah, even to, live here. Right. To I put mean, this Vera was simply, featured on Save Data Team, so I don't know. <laughs> if if the plaintiff important. is a public figure and the matter being talked about is a is a public matter, it's much, much harder to prove. Okay. Which is kind of why news thing news organizations can publish so much celebrity gossip and oh. especially while there's right. claims about politicians. Okay. Right. That's because true. in order to prove defamation in those cases, you pretty much have to prove the person saying the false statements knew the statements were false and said them maliciously, which okay. is a very, very high bar to clear. Yeah. Right. For random nobodies about their personal lives, you usually have to, you, you only have to prove that they were negligent about lying okay uh-huh. so uh-huh. in this case vera is not a public figure mm-hmm. and based on the st- based on the story of runaway alligators being pretty newsworthy <laughs> and the fact that this is a case about using public resources aka the court system uh-huh. you mm-hmm. could argue this is a public matter Ooh. i sort of still don't necessarily <laughs> agree it's still yeah. more like it's just it's just someone's decision on whether they file lawsuits or not. Yeah, it kind of feels like right. he's just being a dick. Right. So, again, this might be a lot easier for Vera to prove if she has any proof that, like, if she can go back and find that she doesn't file a lot of lawsuits that get dismissed, then she's probably going to be able to pretty easily succeed. I mean, not easily, but she should be able to succeed at defamation claim hmm. because she has a much lower, uh, she has a much lower threshold to clear. So uh-huh, I, I uh-huh. would wager C succeeds on this. It, yeah. it seems like Peach is straight up talking out of his ass. Um, yeah. Again, all, right. uh, all the all, all the elements are there. Defendant uttered the words. The words were published, and they caused the plaintiff reputational harm. So all the all the um, elements seem there. And based on Vera just being a private citizen and this being about her decision to sue someone, she probably will succeed on a defamation claim. Fair. Dang. Get Pete. Pete's an ass. Wow. <clears throat> that was that was great. Thank you, Brit. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, could they have could they have actually utilized the alligators better? Agreed. But was it right. a good time with some with some good twists? Yes. Listen, this 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 bar exam writer isn't mammoth, okay? They can yeah. only do so much. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Okay, folks. We have characters we need to meet. Characters? Well, I don't know. I just, hey, I'm just, no spoilers, Wes. Come on. Maybe character. Back in court again. Back in the court again. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Someone who witnessed the crime. It's Lotta Hart again. (laughs) The fucking butterflies. 
What's with this stiff silence? Look at those fucking butterflies. In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. <laughs> Maybe don't admit that. <laughs> and it's lawyers. my job to doubt. And bailiffs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and occasionally parents. random crowd members and my grandson and walkie talkies <laughs> and it's electronic mail <laughs> <laughs> and tiktok <laughs> it's my job to doubt to take no one at their word but in your case I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity why would you ever say that I can't believe he actually said that. <laughs> Neither can Zach. Uh, Dan Gaming <laughs> ventured a bit saying, and Chili's food. <laughs> <laughs> His incel is, is conflicted. <laughs> He's like, uh, must, res must resist. Oh, um, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? Terrified Don't of worry, sweetie. I'm terrified of butterflies. Help me. <laughs> they're gonna kill me. <laughs> they won't leave me alone. They're coming to, they're nope. coming to get me. Oh god, he calls her sweetie. Yeah, that's Fucking the worst. Gross grandpa. Grandpa, come on. <laughs> I've taught you better than this. <laughs> Don't worry, sweetie. There's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. See, he still is like a, a weird samurai. Uh, I was going to say, samurai. he needs to do his... Yeah, his, his weird, fucking, like, Hakama adjustment thing. thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I will bash them with my gavel. Oh, Jesus. If, if, if should, I will need apply you, we will assault trauma. them. <laughs> <laughs> they will suffer severe trauma at my hands. <laughs> I love how they look straight at me when they say that. <laughs> um, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. God damn. Not at all! It was nothing! If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine! No, the honor is all mine! <laughs> well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. They just I made a reference about that to that! What? what a joke they just made? Wow, I forgot about I, wow. I was so focused on the Harlem Shake line, I forgot about this one! Oh wow. my god! Now, now here's the thing, because we found out last time the Harlem Shake wasn't even a meme when this was translated. Yeah. So this they had to be milkshakes bringing no. boys to yard. No, that no. sounds that sounds really old. <laughs> Fucking mediocre potato chair five bits saying she doesn't even have milkshakes. <laughs> yeah, true. She's pretty flat actually. Oh my God. I was gonna say, where are the milkshakes? Oh She's just got butterflies. My God. <laughs> Um, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever is on your mind. I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Kini wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Yes, yes, I can see why you'd say that. She's going to be a tough witness, all right. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. Uh, and several people in the chat shouting out the fact that, yeah, they uh, did in fact say Feeny. Feeny? Feeny. Feeny. Feeny with a Feeny. Feeny. <laughs> what did you in fact witness? <laughs> I had been planning to go back to Feeny's place after class was over. Big ol' fuck! Feeny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. 
he just kind of fucking fell over or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yo, was that a brain aneurysm or a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I smell burnt toast and fell over. Sometimes I just get these blackouts and then people wind up dead around me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> then suddenly Ducky got all wobbly and just collapsed. He OD'd on Cold Killer X. <laughs> <laughs> That's when Feeny noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. Sweet, let's call the case right here. Okay, cool. here. I refuse to cross-examine. Young lady, as old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Uh, please, tell us the truth. But... But I... I would never... Tell the truth. <laughs> That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Mia Fey. What's this? So you two are acquainted? Yes. We've met before. Once. <laughs> In any case, Miss Fay, uh, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you again, Madame Fay. Madame? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. Madame. Uh, madame. She's more like madame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, no. <clears throat> uh, anything calling you? I mean, the biggest one's when, I mean, this is the biggest one. Because yeah, we, we, we on know floor. that. Phoenix already admitted, admitted to pushing him. Yeah. Let me just check to make sure. Do we have, like, a s explicit... Uh, oh, that's the old thing. Dolly's present. Wait, no, wait. What's that? Wait, what's that newspaper article? Oh, we got that at the end last time. Very little information is being disclosed since the victim uh, in the cafeteria said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning 19-year-old female college student uh, who was sitting with the victim. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what uh, else do we got? We don't have a picture of him, like, having been pushed by Phoenix. No, we only have this. That's that one. Uh, the umbrella. Coldex, uh, the umbrella. He fell on top of the abrona, umbrella, according to Phoenix. Okay, <laughs> the that, abrona. Doesn't say the, that doesn't say the, that doesn't re say mention push, the pushing yeah. at all. All right. And then what's, uh, what, just, what's the description on the necklace? A uh, small bottle necklace given to Ray on the day, of the me day they met. He shows it to everyone. <laughs> Like a super annoying person. Uh -huh. Oh my uh -huh. god. I can just press this then. <clears throat> Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. Mm. So what should I do about her testimony just now? Let me see. No, because, like, if it, if we would have the jacket, which has the the print on the back of the uh, thing, I would say we, we can co contradict that, but... Yeah, um, what is the umbrella? Does the umbrella say anything? No. Found near the electrical pole. Yeah, I mean, the closest thing we have is Phoenix's testimony from yesterday, but that... Doesn't explicitly say that he pushed him. Right, I mean, can we try it anyway? We can try it, yeah. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I would never. 
Miss Fay, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I believe the defense is engaged in a, a fishing expedition. Are we hackers? <laughs> that is, uh, she has no supporting. <laughs> Please don't glare at me like that. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print oh, was found okay. in Mr. Swallow's jacket. Sorry, I mean... It has already me. been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. They're just giving us this. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> what? There's no need to try to cover the... to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will. If you don't mind, I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Hmm. It didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear any noise either. Oh, okay, well shit. <laughs> I didn't think they'd give us two statements. Um... Let me catch up with the chat really quick. Uh, uh, three bits saying, "How does Mia's milkshake not bring everyone everyone to the yard in this case?" <laughs> yeah, it's wild. <laughs> uh, Dan getting yeah, imagine, yeah, imagine imagine thinking Dahlia is more attractive than Mia. Dang, oh, you heard it here first, folks. Fridge is like Fridge is like Dahlia has no bangs. I'm not in, yeah, here for say, it. Dahlia is tying her hair away mm -hmm. from her eyes that's Pridge, just a cardinal Pridge, sin if there's one thing Pridge doesn't like it's a forehead and Dahlia <laughs> has too much okay. and, and, two, uh, and having two eyes okay okay now <laughs> it's gonna hate Apollo uh, oh god that's funny uh, <laughs> Dan cheered five bits saying do you want to cross examine her Mia uh, it seems like she's covering for him. Uh, yes. Antelister subscribed for seven months saying, I'm at work, so I can't stay for the whole time, but I love y'all. Have a good stream. Thank you, Antelister. Well, you too. Uh, Dan Gaming Fan Shoot 3 bits saying, I agree. Have you seen her in a kimono? In response oh, to what? Oh, Mia? Mia in a kimono? Did we get Mia in a kimono? I don't think point? so. Maybe. I don't think so. Maybe in some official like art or something. All right. <clears throat> So where were we? The noise? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, should we press this first? Or does it say... Well... Does the umbrella say, like... Oh, there, oh there's... Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah he testified sound. there was a loud sound, yeah. Okay, yeah, then without that. You say you didn't hear any noise. Is that correct? Yes. That's why I was very relaxed, looking at the scenery around me. <laughs> I love that fucking animation. Uh, that's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. He clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? I... Well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Yeah! Um May I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. I was listening to music. On my Zune Pro. I had my, <laughs> I had my Zune Pods in. <laughs> you see, the truth is, I had my <laughs> I had my Zune Pods. Wow. On, okay. And I was listening to music at the time. <laughs> oh. I was listening to NWA's "Fuck the Police." <laughs> <laughs> They're just the best. 
<laughs> I'm all into that hardcore West Coast scene. When, when I need to, when I need to relax, that's exactly what I listen to. I saw them live last month, and it was the best show I ever saw. <laughs> Cut to do- like Punk Dahlia, fucking <laughs> raging at a concert. <laughs> Headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? Oh, I don't do over-the-ear headphones. <laughs> the rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. What a wild sentence that is. I get it, but like... <clears throat> okay. Yeah, like, are you... <sighs> Also, like, I'm this was before, this was 2007, mythology. before, like, the MCU was a thing. So saying Yeah, before Thor, Thor existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thor is an invention of yeah, the Thor MCU. Yeah, Thor didn't exist until Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Sir Gigi points out that she does study literature. Okay, that's fair. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a weird quirk to say that in a court of law, but sure, fine. You got me on that one. Oh, Forgotten Cheesecake says Scandinavian Dahlia confirmed. That's true. <laughs> yeah, she she believes in the in the I'm old really Norse gods. Really excited for Love and Thunder. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is my husbando. <laughs> I mean, how can you not? I uh, mean, come on, people. Uh, <laughs> You're not simping facts, for the Hemsworth. Facts are facts. Okay. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Very, very frightening. Were they very frightening? <laughs> Damn! Galileo? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. Baby. So I put my headphones on to block it out. <laughs> well, Your Honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. You guys have no idea what side you're on, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if there's no contradictions that she's telling the truth and Phoenix didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any clue? Do, do any of these lawyers have any idea what side they're on? Pain, pain Listen, gets so nobody tricked. can predict what the rookie killer does. <laughs> yeah, Pain gets so tricked into sipping for Dahlia, he gets his he fails to get a guilty verdict. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's such a fucking incel that he can't even do his job. <laughs> Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something. She said something that could totally change this whole case. There was lightning. <laughs> he just got he just struck, got by, struck light- by lightning. I got struck by lightning. This whole case is an accident. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Do we have uh, that's he's holding it, right? up his umbrella and he got fucking zapped? Yeah, he's got shock and death. No oh one's guilty God. in this case. <laughs> yeah, why not? Sure, do we want to hit that? <laughs> <laughs> do it. Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. Lightning doesn't exist. <laughs> what do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes? What about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Am I right? Do you know what lightning is, Your Honor? I don't know. I'm not a meteorologist. How's not the time for a science lesson, you nerd? (laughs) Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution... (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Anyway, you fucking dumb shit. Isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Oh, ah! I mean, we we have a picture of the snapped electrical wire. Like, come on, Mia. It's just a coincidence, okay? The wire happened to snap, then he got hit by lightning. Yeah, circumstantial. Hmm, I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. (laughs) Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? Yeah. (laughs) Nothing. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. 
Could it be that the de that the death was actually accidental? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty ver- <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? Shit, you know? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at the loca at that location. What? Damn. What's more, we have evidence that the that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. There's a uh, there's lightning tra electric tracings. It's like the fingerprints of a <laughs> bullet of electricity. I, don't, it's not I even drew little sparks on the picture to show that it was relevant. <laughs> see? Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. And who is this affidavit person, anyway? I was about to say, who is Mr. Bring, affidavit? Bring him into the court immediately <laughs> for questioning. <laughs> the pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. The danger zone? So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Hmm, I see. Apparently the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. That's such a... That's a huge safety risk. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty bad. Ivy University, what the fuck? However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well... I suppose you could say that. Miss <laughs> hmm. Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor. I don't like how this is looking on one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. I don't really think that it's going against you, though, Mia. It's just not going in the direction you were trying to steer it. Well, then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Uh, let me see what oh, it is. Oh, shit. I mean, this thing makes it look weird that the... Uh, what do you call it? The umbrella is, like, way over there. Um... Oh, it's just him holding the stupid pills. Um... Broken near the electrical pole. That's not relevant. Broke due to some sort of impact at 255. Okay, so something hit it. Did Doug hit it? When he fell over? Well, it was like up in the sky though, right? It, like, hit the pole and that snapped the wire or something? It doesn't look like it's that hot. Yeah, it actually looks like it's, like, super low to the ground, considering... I'm trying to get, like, possible answers we could use here. Yeah. Uh... uh the... I... Uh, the answer is... I don't think... I don't personally think it's that obvious what the answer is. Well, hold, um, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't, don't give it just yet. Uh... Okay. 
<clears throat> I mean, I think it has to be the umbrella or Doug. Yeah. Yeah. Probably one of those two. Do you want? Do you want confirmation? Well, let's just. Is let... it one of those two? No. Oh. I'm shocked. Uh, it caused death with fail shock. Is it Phoenix? <sighs> Maybe. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, that's this. That's why I said this one's an interesting one. And, I, yeah, I, no, I, I would just, not have. I would not have guessed that. I would definitely would have got this wrong. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and I would. I would have saved. Doesn't make, and tried this both, doesn't make but... sense for. Doesn't make sense for her to claim it's Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it literally would be her, like blaming her own client. Okay. Well, let's let's try that, I guess. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in with Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. So yeah, those are like really low to the ground. Huh. Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. Why? And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's this? What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right. The victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Okay, so I mean, I was sort of right by saying we should have picked yeah, Doug, but the yeah. game wanted to pick Phoenix for pushing Doug, not for Doug. Hitting right, right, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry I was right, just not the way yeah, the game I'm wanted sorry to I was right, exactly. I mean, I, no, I mean, they, they, I'm not, they, picking Phoenix is right, too. Yes. Right, both, both, this, both of this them should have been situation where I would have said yeah. both answers technically work. Agreed, agreed. Phoenix who pushed Doug um, into it and Doug whose body hitting it broke it. Mm. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> Anime. It's I'm sorry, so Your cool. Honor, but no. It doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, but fuck you. I'm no you, Your Honor. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by this severed cable in the foreground here. Yeah! <laughs> In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Oh. Order! Order in the court! Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. Damn. Damn! The screams of the innocent. <laughs> my favorite. The lamentations of my enemy is ASMR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I was listening to in my headphones. <laughs> Paint, uh, prosecutor Payne crying for, for one hour ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have... Um, Mr. Judge, sir? May I say something? The Madame Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. Well, uh, what the? What the heck? What the heck? Hey, Lois. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> hey, Lois. Hey, just, Objection. just once more. <laughs> hey, hey, Lois, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the time that I was Feeny. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> please, just once more. May I please testify la one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? 
Of course it's all right. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. It's your true colors. And that's why I love you. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. He fell to the ground and then he pushed him into the ground harder like an anime. <laughs> and then I pushed him on the ground. <laughs> the first time was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapped, and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. He crashed into me like Dave Matthews' band? <laughs> hmm. So after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I, I just have to tell the truth. What the Am fuck? I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Am I even in this case anymore? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Okay. Um... Doo -doo. What are we thinking Doo -doo. here, Prigerinsky? Prigerinsky. Yeah, you brought it, you brought it up, so I have to listen to Crash into me by Dave Matthews Band now. Okay. So I'm be I'm be out of touch <laughs> for the next four minutes, seventeen seconds. Yeah, everybody. Uh, go, go, go give go give the uh, Vivo account for Dave Matthews Bands uh, a listen. They deserve it. They don't have a like, views. a comment, and a subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, listen, that, that's something we like to do here at Save Data is promote less highlight than Highlight YouTube. small uh, YouTubers. <laughs> small artists. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> like the Dave Matthews band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their, you know, and their very listen. unknown song, Crash Into Me, which only <laughs> yeah, has 25 been... million views on YouTube. Oh, only? Oh, wow, they're oh, small yeah, time. That's, that's pennies. Yeah, yeah I, right. mean, I mean, this video will get at least 5,000 views in the first week. So, you know, we're, yeah, we're basically there. Give us enough weeks and we'll easily overtake uh -huh. Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You fuck Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> at, the, at the rate we're going, we should hit Dave Matthews numbers by the heat death of the earth. So <laughs> I think we're on track. We're on a good track. I don't think, I don't think, I think even if everybody who has ever cared about Ace Attorney watched our videos, we still wouldn't hit that many. <laughs> <laughs> What if they all watched it twice? Oh, shit. I didn't think Whoa! about that, Bridge. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. How many statements we got here? I think it's like five. So one. Phoenix pushed him twice. Uh, first was in the electrical pole. Then he tried to run away. Phoenix caught up to him and crashed into him. Dave Matthews band. And the cable snapped and Doug got electrocuted. All happened in less than a minute. Uh, what are we, what are we doing on these fools? I actually have no idea. Well, we can start pushing things. Yeah, that's just, much needed. Just like Phoenix start pressing did. things. All right. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched the scene unfold? What? Wait. Miss Faye, I'll have to ask you to stop badgering this witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Oh, murder. Kill the, kill, kill the other guy. Fight kill each me. other. Kill each other. Fight kill for my each love. Other. Murder, the, murder your, each other for me. But also, please give me that bottle back. <laughs> I asked you every fucking day, Feeny. Give me the goddamn bottle back. <laughs> it did, you are so fucking weird. It didn't have to be like this, Feeny. <laughs> Cheer them on? What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for them both, and that they would each give the fight their all. Wait, no, she did do that. <laughs> well, the sight of the sight of bloodshed is is the most beautiful thing I've ever witnessed. <laughs> 
It matches my hair so beautifully. Mm -hmm. That's very sweet of you to be so supportive. And what happened after that? That doesn't sound quite right. There were handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather jacket? Well, um, uh, no, there weren't. Madam Fay, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? My Feeny wouldn't leave any prints behind in that case, would he? Man, I'm going to have to look up that music video and see if I can use anything to make a bit for this. But nobody knows what the hell that music video is. It's not iconic. It's a weird music <laughs> video, dude. Yeah. That's why we got to make it iconic. That's why That's why we're telling you to go to the Vivo account for <laughs> Dave Matthews. <laughs> uh, bunga bunga. <laughs> Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry. I didn't actually see it. I, I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> Don't figure out the contradiction here. It's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Think, Mia. Uh, really quick, let me catch up with the chats. Flava Dave cheered three bits, saying, Well, Your Honor, I'm into BS BDSM, so I like watching other men murder each other. <laughs> Flava Dave, <laughs> do you know what BDSM is? I don't is? think you know what BDSM is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we you all know, thought that. The M, the M stands for murder. murder. <laughs> <laughs> Battery, murder. Bad dudes yeah. Battery, starting murder. Uh, the killer, <laughs> murder, and Shelly, the killer. Stands for big, dumb, simp murder. <laughs> oh, okay. That's very good. Uh, we'll press the other two options. Doom, doom. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your test previously in your testimony, you said the following. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know. I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied to the court. I was a bad girl, I know. Um, Mr. Judge? <sighs> Yes. His face. Would you please, please forgive little old me? No, to the gallows. <laughs> of course he won't. What you did is per- Oh, come now. It was just a little old white lie. We'll forget it this time. But please be more careful from now on, all right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. <laughs> Oh yeah, Santa. Yeah. The, ju the judge had better be more careful. The judge had better be more careful himself. Something. Yeah, I missed it. Sorry. I was not even click. Dark Alley is friendlier than that girl. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, first time he pushed him. Okay. You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole? I know he doesn't look it, but Creamy can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. What? What? Oh, really? But I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. And he really is scary when he gets mad. I mean, an imp isn't a creature I associate with, like, angry strength. <laughs> yeah, that's like a, a little a little prankster. Everybody, right, I would think, like... Everybody knows the famous imp push in D&D, &D, you know? Yeah, um, like... <laughs> what's it, like... Brute or ogre or Matt something. Matt 20 on his imp push. <laughs> yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. And Dougie got a crit fail on his dexterity check. <laughs> and I roll and I rolled max damage on the electrical attack. <laughs> uh we might not have pressed this one. 
So let me get this. Oh, we did. No, oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So shoot, we have an objection in what we have already. Um. I'm missing something in the evidence then. Let's see here. Dum dum dum. So electrical shock. Uh, crime photo is this. Which I don't think this contradicts anything. Um, I don't know. Victim's watch was stopped at the time of death. Yep, it says three. Uh, Come on, does it say three? Let's see. Yeah. Like just after three, maybe. Is how I would read that? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, like three, like three o oh, two uh, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, cold killer X, the umbrella, anything, oh, the testimony. Oh, okay, yeah. That's also I don't think. Okay, but does two now does two fifty five contradict with the three o'clock? Yeah, well the answer is yes, but I don't know if. Oh, the cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted all occurred in less than a minute. Bada bing. We got you. Now, which thing do we present? Is it the picture of the watch or the thing snapping? Or the... I'd try the student's testimony since it's new. All right. Seems right. more relevant. Let's save because I'm... It doesn't matter if we get this wrong, but I'll be grumpy if we do. Uh, <clears throat> we go for perfect score. Hey! Oh, we got it. it. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Almost said it. Almost said it. Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Yeah! Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during this 10 minute interval? Phoenix kept pushing him over and over and over. <laughs> he got him Just in a get electrocuted already. <laughs> he got him in a Dang. combo. The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. 